This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. This episode has crossover appeal. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. The TV industry loves their stunts. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And one of the most popular is the crossover. Yes. Where cast of two or more shows meet. Yeah, this kind of came up because we were talking about um, Charlie's Angels. On Love Boat. On the Love Boat. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. I want to see that. Yeah. Well, there's a wealth of info about this on online because nerds love lists. Yes, yes, this is true. <laughs> so there's spreadsheets and... <laughs> <laughs> Huge charts. They're all available. I can see all these flow charts where, you know, the interconnectedness yes. of shows. Absolutely. Now, because there's so much out there, I'm only covering American Broadcast Network's live action and existing shows. So, not, not where it's like they're putting people on a show to spin them off. Yeah, yeah. And no, yeah, no type of backdoor pilot here. Mm-hmm. Spinoffs, as you mentioned, are one of the easiest ways to create a crossover once they're already set up. Mm -hmm. You have the same producers, the same studio, generally the same network. Mm -hmm. We start with the CSI franchise, four shows there, plus Cold Case and Without a Trace, Mm -hmm. all produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of cross-pollination going on among those shows. Exactly. There's also, of course... The Law and Order franchise, mm-hmm. five shows, plus New York Undercover, Conviction, and Homicide, all from Dick Wolf. Mm-hmm. Now there's, I don't know if you talk about it at any point, but yes. there's also all the Chicago shows from Dick Wolf. Absolutely. And and, and in fact, the Chicago shows also cross over <laughs> and do that with Law and Order shows. Right. <laughs> They've been on Law and Order SVU. So. <laughs> We have the Star Trek franchise, Mm -hmm. five different shows with lots of characters. Yes. Even even when it didn't make sense, like in the last episode, Enterprise. Yeah. (laughs) There's also the Beverly Hillbillies franchise Mm -hmm. with three shows. Now, one thing interesting here is Ebb from Green Acres appears on Beverly Hillbillies, even though they had previously watched Beverly Hillbillies as a TV show on... Green Acres, and in fact, did a play based on the show they watched. Well, because that's because the Beverly Hillbillies in that universe were like the Kardashians. Yeah. It was like reality TV in that universe. Hmm. Yeah. The Cheers characters appeared on Frasier quite a bit. In yeah. fact, the Cheers bar, when it when the show ended, was removed and replaced with Frasier's apartment. It's the same stage. Mm-hmm. We also have shows on the same network on the same night, and this was very popular. Mm -hmm. NBC's Thursday must-see TV characters would cameo on each other's shows. Mm -hmm. Friends, Mad About You, Cheers, Wings, Caroline in the City, Hope and Gloria, The Single Guy. Now, the really interesting thing about Friends and Mad About You was that they had... They each had a character who were sisters. They were right. twin sisters. Right. So it was Phoebe and Ursula. Yes. So, you know, you'd occasionally get the crossover, but you'd also have her appearing occasionally on both on on uh Mad About Mad You, about you right. as Ursula rather yes. than as Phoebe. So. Right. Now this all culminated in the nineteen ninety four Blackout Thursday event when a fictional East Coast blackout tied together multiple shows. Mm-hmm. Seinfeld was on that night, but was excluded due to production issues. Basically, they weren't included, and the show had been shot several weeks earlier, and so they couldn't do it. Later, though, Paul's character on Mad About You turned out to be subleasing an old apartment to Kramer. Uh So they tied those two shows together. Yes. And then, Mad About You later tied their show to the Dick Van Dyke show oh my by God. having an episode with Alan Brady on So that's it. like that's like 30 or 40 years later or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. ABC countered with their own TGIF crossovers involving Full House, Family Matters, Step by Step, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Boy Meets World. Mm-hmm. While CBS made fun of the whole thing with Shameless Monday, a crossover involving Everybody Loves Raymond and King of Queens. Mm-hmm. 
Aaron Spelling shows loved their crossovers. Yes. We mentioned Charlie's Angels and the Love Boat. Charlie's Angels were on an episode of Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Love Boat and Fantasy Island had a crossover yes. in that a guest on the former show, played by Lenny Anderson, continued on to the latter show. So she took a cruise and then she and went then to went, Fantasy Island. And immediately went to Fantasy Island. You know, as think, the same character. You'd think more people would do that. I don't you, know. <laughs> yeah, you, you might as well combine them. It's a combo trip. You'd save you some know, money. You know, I find it totally weird that you cannot watch any of these Aaron Spelling shows online anywhere. Yeah, I looked this up, and by the way, a great source is called canistream.it, and you can look for any TV show or movie and find out if there's anywhere it legally streams. The only thing I could find was episodes of Charlie's Angels are available on Vudu to purchase at one ninety nine a piece. Yeah. Eh. I don't know. We don't know why spelling shows are that way. Maybe they just think nobody wants to watch them. I don't know. Yeah. But there were multi part episodes that started on one show and ended on another. Mm -hmm. We had Ironside and the Bold Ones. Yes. Six Million Dollar Man and Bionic Woman. Mm -hmm. Different Strokes and Hello Larry. Magnum P.I. and Murder She Wrote. <laughs> that one strikes me as very <laughs> odd. ER and Third Watch. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned Dick Wolf's Chicago franchise is basically nothing but a crossover. Yeah, like all the Chicago <laughs> store shows are so interrelated, right. you know, so. And this past season, we just had Bones and Sleepy Hollow crossover. Oh, and that was just <laughs> horrible. It was terrible. <laughs> we also have uh, cases of cameos. Yes. And these are really weird. Superman was on I, I Love Lucy. Mm -hmm. Lurch from Adam's Family and Colonel Clink from Hogan's Heroes were in Batman window gags. This yeah. is when they're climbing up the wall yeah. and somebody pops out the window. Mm -hmm. We had Face Man from the A-Team, Arnold Jackson from Different Strokes, June Cleaver from Leave it to Beaver, The Hulk, Kit from Knight Rider and Aunt Esther from Sanford and Son were all in the same episode of Amazing Stories. Oh, <laughs> and then Mr. Carlin uh, from the Bob Newhart show was on an episode of ALF. In fact, Mr. Carlin is on several different shows. But not as many as a character we will soon mention. Right. We also have strange crossovers. One example is Community where Abed appeared on an episode of Cougar Town as an extra and then mentions it on his show. Yeah. Because Community was a very meta show. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned the these overarching crossover concepts. Yes. The first one being the Munch Principle. Yes. John Munch, played by Richard Belzer, mm -hmm. first appeared on Homicide in 1993. Yes. And, and then his character there retires from the police force and goes to work... In New York. Yes. On Law and Order. Right. And over 20 years, his character showed up on Law and Order, Law and Order SUV, SVU. SVU. I always say SUV. Yeah. Law and Order, Trial by Jury, Arrested Development, yep. X Files, mm -hmm. The Wire, The Beat, 30 Rock, and, and. And, not to mention, he showed up animated on The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, a Jimmy Kimmel Live episode in character. Yes. So it's ten shows in all. He played the same character in live action longer than any other character. <laughs> he beats Fraser Crane and Marshall mm -hmm. Dillon from Fraser and Gunsmoke, respectively. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this all pales in comparison to the Tommy Westfall theory. Yeah. <laughs> this came out of a blog entry by Dwayne McDuffie mm -hmm. in 2002, a comic book writer. He died in 2011. Tommy was a rarely seen character on St. Elsewhere, mm -hmm. this 80s medical drama. He's the autistic son of uh, one of the lead characters. Mm -hmm. And we learn in the final scene of the series that the entire series was made up in Tommy's head. Yes. Because he's holding a snow, snow globe, globe with, with a hospital with, in, in it. it. And, yeah. <laughs> now, the problem here is that St. Elsewhere characters... Because I think mostly because of NBC wanted to cross promote a lot of shows. Yes, characters from that show appeared on Cheers and Homicide, mm -hmm. and shares continuity or characters with The White Shadow, It's Gary Shandling Show, Mash, and The Bob Newhart Show. That's mm -hmm. another case of Mr. Carlin appeared mm -hmm. on <laughs> on Saint Elsewhere. 
And some of those shows then generated crossovers of their own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all begat here. There's a Tommy Westfall Universe site that, as of last year, found links to 419 TV series, some of which are very tentative, such as Easter eggs in the background. Like, there'd be a company in in, uh, in show A uh -huh. that's in on a sign in the background on show B, so like, mm -hmm. oh, those must be in the same continuity. Yeah. This goes all the way back to I Love Lucy in 1951. <laughs> So really, all of these TV shows are imaginary. Well done, yeah. Mark. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the idea is that all of these shows are technically in the same continuity. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> and finally, we just got a cross-network crossover. Mm -hmm. Flash and Supergirl, both from the same producers, who have multiple shows in the same continuity with Flash and Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But we had an earlier cross-network crossover this season when Constantine appeared on Arrow. However, you got to put an asterisk on that because Constantine had already been canceled by that yeah. point. I have to say, I really did enjoy that Flash Supergirl crossover. Mm -hmm. And technically, they're not in the same universe. That's right. Yeah, they made it clear. It's separate continuities. Yes. <laughs> he... He vibrated in his in, way into, into that, that other that continuity. Other, it's an alternate Earth, you know, so so don't expect that to happen all the time. Right. Although they're talking about doing another one next year already. Well, and well, they should. Didn't the JLA appear and, and the JSA do a yearly crossover That's in the right. comics? That's right. We might as well. So it's just going to be another crisis uh, thing. And while you're waiting for that crisis to occur, you can yes. check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. I'm off to another crossover. Mark's going to go appear on another show. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>